Hello, Oscillator Sync here. In the past, when writing lyrics, one tool that I've made use of is a pair of scissors. Taking the scissors to a text, whether that's something you've written yourself or maybe a book or newspaper, and chopping it up into words or phrases allows you to take that pre-existing body of work and recombine it into something new. Maybe you change the order, maybe you throw parts away or recontextualize passages to play with a meaning or tone. This technique can be a fun way to spark new lyrical ideas. Recently though, as I've been exploring techniques of generative music, this idea of decomposition and reconstruction has become really interesting to me in a musical context, and it's something I've been playing with, both as a way to spark ideas and as a compositional means to an end. Today I want to take a look at some ways to approach this idea using some of the really neat features on the Arturia Keystep Pro. Okay, let's start by recording in a sequence on track one to begin with. This can be like our original text in this metaphor, if you like. Uh, I'm going to do this one in just in step mode, I think. And I'll just improvise something in. Um... Something like that. Uh, that's the digger tone by the way, uh, with its own built-in effects, lovely. Do like FM. Anyway, uh, so let's have a listen. Okay, let's uh, start by slowing that right down. So if we hit shift, we can change the time division on sequence. We'll go slow, uh, like slow things at the moment. Okay, that's better. So, let's start taking scissors to our sequence, if you like. So the first thing that we can do is take scissors to our sequence and discard parts of it now and again. So the way that we do that on the Keystep Pro is by assigning the randomness parameter to each of the steps. So the randomness parameter in the sequencer mode uh, should probably be called sort of more probability. So as we start stepping through in step edit mode, so we can adjust each step in turn, I'm going to turn down the uh, the randomness, turn down the randomness, uh, or turn down the probability for each of the steps to sort of roughly, I'll go roughly 50%-ish. Uh, the nice thing about the way that the probability works on the Key Step Pro is that if you have a step with multiple notes on it, many of these steps does. The randomness actually applies to each of the notes individually. So what you end up with sometimes will be um, parts of chords being played, or it might be just a single note. You might get everything, you might get nothing. So if we start playing this back now. Starting to throw away entire steps there. I think maybe now that we're going slower, it might change the time division up to eighth notes. So now we have a, a sequence where occasionally we have things sort of thrown away, but the general feel of the sequence will remain the same because everything is still happening in the order that it was originally played. So you have that progression that was already there. So let's talk about what what we can do on the Keystep Pro to start doing this kind of shuffling approach where in uh, the uh, lyric analogy we're moving words around not just discarding them. So there are a couple of different ways we can do that uh, on the Keystep Pro and they have slightly different feels. So the first thing we can try uh, is if we go to uh, the shift menu here and on the sequence pattern uh, selections here you might not be able to see on the camera but you have um, three options here. You have forwards, which is what it's currently on. It's playing in order. We have random, where the uh, notes we played random randomly, so or the steps being played randomly. So that's one way we can sort of uh, shuffle everything up. The nice thing about this is that it's uh, not destructive, so if we ever want to go back, we can just switch back to our original forwards 
mode there and get the same feel back. But the third option here I really like, which is called Walk. And what Walk is, is kind of random within the order. So you'll see that, generally speaking, uh, the steps are progressing. I feel it's showing up on the camera, it's very bright. Um, the steps are progressing in order, but now and again you sometimes get them skipping over a step. Sometimes it steps backwards. Sometimes it plays a step twice rather than once. So what you end up with here is a sequence that kind of still progresses in a similar sort of feel. But it's still kind of messed up and mixed up. So maybe this is like shuffling a couple of words here and there within our lyrics, but still basically having the flow of the narrative being the same. So, uh, the sequence uh, pattern in terms of the ordering is a non-destructive process. We can always go back. What I think is quite exciting about the Keyset Pro, though, is that we have some um, destructive mutators for our sequences as well that can be really, really interesting, um, either to spring new ideas or, or actually just part of a performance. So, there are a couple that I want to talk about. Um, uh, you access these by holding down shift and there you hit one of the uh, step buttons here. So the first one that we'll talk about is on step 12 and it's it's written down here, it says random order. So this is going to do a destructive randomization of our pattern. So the notes that are on the steps are going to stay the same, but now the order that they're playing. Should we? We come out of uh, walk mode for a second, just so you can hear that it really is different now. So now we have a very different story being told by the harmony. And we can keep hitting shift and step 12 to keep randomizing. So that means as part of a performance, when you feel like a, a part is becoming stagnant, shift and 12 and you get something that is still going to be contextually right in terms of the, the music, in terms of the harmony. We're not straying away from notes that we know work here, but it's a, a different story being told. The narrative is different which I think is quite cool. And of course we could be combining this with walk as well. So that even within these new, um, uh, these new sequences that we're generating here, we're still getting that movement that is not completely static. I really like with this walk mode that sometimes you get the same step twice. Nice. So. Uh, the next one that I want to talk about that I think is particularly um, uh, useful here is on uh, step 14. And this one is marked as a random octave. So this is going to take the notes in our sequence and it's going to shift it into different octaves, essentially recontextualizing uh, what's going on here. We'll get different inversions of chords. Let's give that a go. Immediately, that different inversion there of that chord there is really lovely. We've got that upper note there. We didn't have that before. All the notes are still the same, but the octaves they're being played in could have been shifted around. And it's different ideas, different inversions. So there was a note there in the bass, which um, isn't one of the, uh, isn't the, the root of the chord. So you had that interesting inversion. And it's still working from a harmonic perspective. But now it's kind of different. And again, 
this is something we can just go during a performance and just hit it again and find a new layout. So let's introduce another track here because these things kind of get interesting when you start modifying them uh, with them overlapping. So uh, let's set this one to eighth notes as well. And let's just record this uh, live. Let's do it unquantized. That's risky considering how bad a keyboard is I am, but give it a go. And I'll just put on the metronome, you might be able to hear it. Just coming through the. I have to take one ear off my headphones to hear it. Yeah. So let's give that a go. So we've got something happening in there. Uh, that incidentally is the micro freak going through a TC electronic flashback too. So uh, let's go across our steps here and do um, what we did before. And let's make sure they're not always playing. Perhaps we won't go quite as low as before. So maybe just sort of around 75-ish. Just go through all of these. Turn that randomness down or other probability down. And of course we can do similar tricks here, so perhaps we'll set this to walk mode. here come back around to track one maybe we'll randomize the order again and the octave perhaps we'll randomize the order on this one as well This final track, track three, uh, that's the minilog which is running into the digger tone to get its effects. Uh, I'm going to try something a little bit different. So, um, what I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to set this last step to seven, I'll probably do move me too high well have a look as we go so um, what I want to do with this track is uh, slightly different and that is I'm, I want to lay out various notes from a chord with long gate times and then lower the probability quite low so what we get as it plays is this shifting uh, chord uh, chordal accompaniment that's happening so um, what key are we in key are we in? I think probably 
stuff based around F is going to be safe. Let's go longer than seven as our last have Nine. Sure. So um, again, we'll come in here and we'll just start laying out uh, notes from the chords. So we'll have an F in there, C there, A there, the higher C, the higher F. Uh, maybe we'll have the E in there. And that D in there to darken it up. And G there as well, perhaps. Be nice. So we'll come out of record mode, go into step edit mode. And what I'm going to do coming through here is I'm going to set their gate times uh, to 16, but then set their randomness pretty low. 16 and around pretty low. So what we should end up with here. once I've adjusted all these knobs. Uh, it would be great if there was a way to adjust all of these all at once. Arturo, if you are watching, it'd be good to be able to modify several steps at once, I think. Turn that one down. Next one, nearly there. Turn that one down. Yeah, and turn the one down. Cool, let's mute those two tracks and let's just see whether we have something popping up here. Okay, that needs to run way slower, so I'll set this one down to quarter notes. So you can hear now that we've got this drone that's happening and the notes that are popping out of it. I suspect we could probably actually turn the probability down even lower than it was actually, so it's still quite high. We might want to balance that maybe by making the gate slightly longer in some cases. Oh, it's quite long already. Yeah, that's more the feel we're going for. So now we've got this chordal thing happening here. And of course, same deal again. We can switch to a different uh, sequence mode. I think maybe random makes sense for this one rather than walk. Let's bring in one of the other parts. feel like we need to shift what's going on here. Perhaps we'll do a randomization of the octaves again. Quite interesting when we do it on a chord. And we're constantly taking those chopped up ideas.
texts to them. Through our musical scissors. sequence steps. Again, it would be great if we could do this all at once. Tori, please. Got that lovely... It's not turned up. Got that lovely evolving droney pad happening. So anyway, friends, I hope you enjoyed that uh, and uh, found it interesting and hopefully it highlighted you a particular facet of the Keystep Pro that maybe you hadn't considered. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's always more synth fun to be had. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.